The president of Ijo National Congress is Benjamin Okaba. He has expressed misgivings about the declaration of President Muhammad Buhari that funds looted at the Niger Delta Development Commission will be recovered. The president also said those found culpable in the forensic audit report shall be punished. Buhari also made the declaration in his address in Abuja at the virtual opening of the NDDC prototype hostel at the University of Uyo, Akwaibum State, on Thursday. But Okaba described the president's vow as mere rhetoric, stressing that there were or there was nothing exciting about it, as Buhari had made similar promises before. Well, joining us live is High Chief Nengi James. He's the second national vice president of Ijo National Congress Incorporated Worldwide and coordinator of the Association of Rural Chiefs for Peace and Development. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, um, the, the issue of the NDDC has become a, you know, a resounding issue, a problem that... On, on every daily news cycle, you get to make reference to. Um, how do we even begin to solve the issue of the NDDC, being that it seems to be a hydra-headed monster? Yes, uh, it's very funny that uh, uh, Mr. President is playing pranks with uh, the NDDC issue. Totally, let me inform you. The NDDC is not something that needs to be uh, discussed with in a political arena. It's purely something that ought to have helped the, uh, uh, reduce the tension and the assist the developmental activities in the remote and neglected and marginalized environments of the River Rhine coastal people in Niger Delta, mostly the oil producing area in Nigeria states, who, in addition, what the Willings Commission stated that that environment should be seen as a special area of development. That is what the NDDC is to do. Hmm. Um, let's talk about the audits that the president has promised. And this is also something that we keep hearing all the time. My biggest so, question is... Not that the is to be in place... Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we, we lost connection for a bit. But I'm going to the audit issue. Um, the president has promised over and over that there will be an audit. And, of course, okay. he, he's talking about the fact that it would be followed up. But we do not see that in reality. My first question is, where is Professor Ponde? After the drama that has, uh, you know, ensued during... Uh, that hearing, everything had gone into radio silence. Why is the, um, your group not advocating and pushing that that issue be revisited again? Yeah, I've, I've, I have earlier informed you that uh, the issue is because of the political jamboree. Okay. Mr. President met with the Ajo National Congress in Zila, and I have his response handy. Professor Benjamin Okaba led the team, and in the issue of NDDC, we raised it, and Mr. President promised that if immediate, immediately, Akabio, the leader of the Niger Delta Ministry, and over the of this report, he will surely upgrade the NDDC board. From that day till today, the audit has been submitted. First, Madam, let me inform you that even the report is a politically motivated. Hmm. That report should have been submitted to Mr. President. They submitted to the Attorney General. The Attorney General work is to prosecute and work with the relevant agency to recover the money and any other thing that is in the findings of the audit report. Why was that audit report hand over to the Attorney General? That is the first issue. Another issue is Mr. President on the mining and of 
sin and oppressively oppressing the NDDC on their feet, of which for the years the NDDC has been in comatose. The Niger Delta area has never benefited from any development. But then, but, but I'm, so, I'm sorry to come in. I'm sorry. Let me come in there. As much as I, I understand what you're saying and where you're going with this, it's pretty easy to point fingers at the federal government and say this. There's a lot of politicking, of course. There's a lot of politicking in the NDDC. But then the NDDC has also had people from the Niger Delta head it. And these people are supposedly uh, there to help grow the Niger Delta, develop the Niger Delta, but that has not been the case. So can we really say that people are trampling on the NDDC and not letting it achieve its goals? Can we also not say that the members or the people who are from the Niger Delta representing the Niger Delta on those boards and also leading the NDDC are part of the problem? Yes, I agree with you, Toto. That is why I also and every most of us supported the audit report. Whether it's our father, whether it's our uncle, whether it's our wife, any of them that is corrupt and found one thing by the report should be handled accordingly. As I'm talking, I support it. But that should not stampede the development of the area. Madam, let me tell you that the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management is going on in the north. Other things, northeast is going on. Why is the Niger Delta owned? Are they not corrupt? Is not the ministries, those ministries not corrupt? We agree our people are corrupt. That should not stop the NDDC going. Nigeria is fantastically corrupt, but it is still ruling Nigeria. Why didn't he vacate the office for others to rule? So that should not be a yardstick. The issue is has to do with development. A thief is a thief. Let us pursue the thief. Let us not undermine the development of Niger Delta. If our people are corrupt, we are not saying that you should not pursue them, but that should not allow him to use this as a political gimmick or a political propaganda, a political scenario. Okay. Quick, quickly, uh, before I let you go, um, I remember that, that um, recently the I, I, um, the people, uh, the one of the chiefs from the uh, Niger Delta, Chief Clark, um, spoke about the issue of resource control, um, and this also one where the other ties to the issue of the NDDC. Where do you stand on this issue of resource control? Because, you know, um, we keep hearing about it, but when it comes down to it, the Niger Delta and the oil that is beneath it is, not, is always the subject of the conversation on resource control. Yeah, we cannot run away from resource control. If both is being uh, taken by the Zafara people and other things that are in Nigeria, are owned by the people. What stops the Niger Delta people owning their resources? That is non-negotiable. Even if we are oppressed for 100 years, one day there is going to be a liberation. People that own the resources, if we don't own the resources, why did Nigeria agree to give us least of 13% constituted in the constitution? What Mr. Bassenjo is saying, He's only saying because he compensated his own land in the days of his military service. And I want to inform you, resources in your environment, you ought not to negotiate. This is oppressive tendency. If not, in other areas that we compare the federalism, they are oppressing it without fight. But we know very well, let everywhere get oil. And we will be happy that everybody is having oil so that we can also get our, our resources on our own. I have Baushi, we have Zamfara, we have Lagos, we have Kogi, they are all having resources now. 
That is the competition we want. All of us compete with our product and pay tax to the general pub. Allow us to move forward, to manage our resources, and let the true federalism, true physical federalism. Okay. We are operating an advertising unitary system. So we want a situation where we will all operate in our different commodities independently and pay tax to the uh, central. And so going forward, finally, going forward, with the body language of the federal government, the Mr. President, and all that's been going on, do you see this coming to fruition anytime soon? Don't forget, this is 2022. The next election, the next year is the election year, so the campaigns begin now. How are you yeah, um, pivoting to make sure that happens? They have already neglected and marginalized us. And we believe that that will not be accepted. What will Buhari tell the people when they are coming to campaign? Is it for the years he has marginalized us? Is it, is it that time he wants to put the NDDC board? It is, it is very painful. And there is nothing uh, where he will tell most of the people. And they will believe him again. Because we never believe that elders will tell us lies. Well, thank you. I want to say thank you, High Chief uh, Nengi James, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.